Hello, coaches. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better Spotlight. Today, we have a panel of special guests. Everyone I'm chatting with today is part of our current cohort of The Coach. We have Carrie in Moscow, Ryan in Saudi, Amy in Hong Kong, Abby in Kuwait, and Shep in China. All of them are in a variety of different coaching positions, and I am so excited to share this conversation with you so you can get a window into what the experience of the coach is like from a participant perspective. In this Spotlight episode, we are focusing in on the power of reflection and making time for deep learning and how the coach has supported that experience for this particular group of participants. I'm excited to be sharing this episode with you today because our fifth cohort of the Coach Micro Credential is open for registration right now. As you may know, we only open registration once a year so we can build a close community of coaches within our cohort model, and you'll hear a lot about that in today's episode. If this sounds interesting to you, stay tuned to the end of the podcast to hear current The Coach participant, Emily Graves, who is not on the call today, an ES classroom teacher at Yokohama International School, share why she finds The Coach such a great learning opportunity for all educators. In the full-length audio podcast, you can hear about the professional development journey of each participant, as well as a specific coaching story that they've been able to implement as part of their work in The Coach. If you want an inside look into what we're learning in the program, how that learning looks in practice, and why our participants are so engaged in learning so much, this conversation is a must listen. To hear the full episode, subscribe to Coach Better wherever you get your podcasts. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better. Today, I am super excited to be here with several of our The Coach participants, and we're going to talk about professional learning for coaches, both inside and outside of the coach program, because I think a lot of times professional growth for coaches is easily forgotten because they're busy doing the professional growth of all the other educators they work with. So it's something that can kind of fall by the wayside. And I wanted to make sure that we took some time to highlight the amazing work and dedication of these coaches and see how that kind of fits into the scope of professional growth for educators at your school. So I'm going to ask everyone to go around and introduce themselves. I will just call on you based on where I see you on my screen. And right now I see Ryan, so I'm going to call on Ryan first. Ryan, can you tell us where you are, what you do, how long you've been doing that? Just a general brief overview, please. Sure. Uh, I'm in Saudi Arabia. This is my second year here, uh, my 10th year international, uh, and my fourth year as a tech consultant uh, coach. and uh, hopefully uh, with the new school that I'm at, that uh, I can help change their thinking uh, and move forward and in moving into the coaching realm here. Awesome. Thank you so much. I see Carrie next. So Carrie, can you please tell us about yourself? Hi, I'm Carrie Hart, and I am at the Anglo-American School of Moscow, where I have been for five years. Um, this is the first year I've had the title of coach. But I have been coaching um, as well as tech integrating, integrationist, not really sure what you want to call that, um, for eight years um, at two different schools. Um, And so this year I'm transitioning into innovation coach and design thinking and designing. And so it is a new position for the school. And so we're learning all of that. Yeah. And. Although he's not here on this call right now, we know that there's other people in the coach program that are going through the same kind of design maker transition. So that's really cool to have you together, like learning together in that sense. Um, Next, I see Abby on my screen. So I'll ask Abby to say hello. Hi, I'm Abby. I am an instructional coach for literacy in um, Kuwait at the American International School of Kuwait. And this is my first year as an instructional coach. Um, And it's 
been a, a really great experience. <laughs> Yay. That's good to hear. Thank you, Abby. Um, and I see Shep next on my screen. Hi, my name's Shep. I am currently in Shenzhen, China, working at Sheko International School. Uh, I'm in my third year in the learning innovation coach position. And uh, this is my sixth year in China. I should probably know this, but were you at that same school before you became learning innovation coach or did you come from a different school? Yes. Yeah, so I taught for um, three years in the classroom here and then another eight years in the classroom before that. Got it. Thank you. And last but not least, Amy, I know you're out there somewhere, even though you're not specifically on my screen right now. Hi, everybody. I'm Amy Garrett. I am an ed tech coach in the upper primary at HKIS in Hong Kong. This is my second year at the school, and um, I've been internationally in a few other countries before that, but it's been a really great year because we're building our coaching team at HKIS. Um, so there's been a lot of exciting things happening. Fabulous. Thank you all so much for sharing a little bit about where you are and what you're doing. I do think that's a big part of the coach is like feeling like you're within a group of people who are learning and leveraging those skills in the same way that you are and having a mentor to kind of work through that with you. I think those aspects are unique and offer a lot of value to those who maybe are taking the risk and investing with their own money like Amy was talking about. I know some of you, some of the others in the group have done the same. I have two specific questions I want to ask. And I don't know if I should ask one before the other or ask them twice, ask them together so you can answer them. But one is when you joined or now that you're part of the cohort, what's your like main goal? What do you hope to get out of it? And then my second question is like, what's an aha moment you've had? What's a like, oh, I wish I knew that, or I'm so glad I learned that, or this is something that's really new for me. And I kind of feel like those go a little bit hand in hand, but maybe I'll let whoever wants to talk about either one of those, I'll let you start. Um, I'm curious really what your goal is to get out of the program. Like you're, I know we all have a professional goal within the program and then any kind of aha that you've had so far. Go for it, Ryan. Uh, okay. So uh, when I was job hunting um, and having a, a handful of interviews, uh, this was all on a, a soft look. So it wasn't at a job fair. It was just, you know, over line and, and chatting through via, via chats. And, um, you know, this coaching kept coming up. Like coaching, I'm like, what's coaching? <laughs> like cognitive coaching, what's, what's that? Um, so, you know, they're like, well, what do you, what do you do to coach? I'm like, well, um, can you explain what you're asking? Um, not n really knowing, uh, what they were wanting to know. And I'm like, oh, well I do this and this and this. They're like, well, you do coach. Um, so knowing that, but then because I, you know, didn't have any formal training, um, I'm like, huh, I need to get some formal training. Uh, so I found, uh, through, through my connections, uh, that there is, this great uh, company that's training training uh, teachers of how to be coaches. And uh, so that was one thing I want to get out of this is to become a better coach, um, knowing that I have some sort of background uh, and just to become better. And then can you remind me what the second question was, please? Second question was anything around, so I know I should never ask two questions at once. I always do that. Um, second question was anything <laughs> around like an aha moment, like something that really jumped out at you now that you've started the coach so far. Oh, so, okay. Yes, I was going with there. Uh, the aha was I'm already doing part of it already. Um, and not realizing that before and going, oh, it's this big thing that, you know, it's this huge event that I don't know if I can go through this and, and do this well. And then knowing, oh, I, I'm already doing part of this already in my conversations with teachers, uh, with admin, and many things like that. I'm really interested to hear that in your job search, this was two years ago. They were, you were here, heard the word coaching a lot. A lot. Yes. That's interesting. Did, did the rest of you have that a similar experience? I know that not all of you have moved around like Amy, you're probably the only one. And maybe Carrie, was that also a similar experience? Like that word? Well, you were looking for those positions. So I guess it probably would have, right? When I job hunted for the current position, the coach was not um, a word that was currently, that was being used at the time, but it is a word that integrationists were turning into coaches. Yes. But a lot of times it's just a name change. 
It's literally just yes. they take tech integrationist and they replace it with tech coach because it sounds like the current yep. thing. Um, which is exactly what they did with most tech integrationists when they turned them from tech teacher to tech yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so for me, it was um, sort of a way joining the the program was a way for me to um, specifically this program, um, as opposed to a cognitive coaching program was a way for me to be in a pro coaching program where I knew I could be mentored specifically from a tech uh, standpoint. And I knew that I would be able to have um, access to people who um, could help make sure that they knew the answers to those tricky questions that tech coaches get thrown at um, in those tricky situations where we're constantly fighting that battle of being a consultant and a tech support versus being a coach. Um, so I knew that um, the mentors, Kim, but also all the other mentors, didn't matter what level, I knew that I would be able to get in touch with people who would have that experience and be able to consult with me as well as coach me through those things. Um, and, and so that was a really, um, uh, definite um, moment uh, reason for picking the program. And then my ah aha moment is very similar to Ryan's in the sense that just as more confirmation that what I was already doing and the ideal idea in my head of what I should be doing is in line with all this. There's not been a major like, oh, I'm not doing that right at all. There's, oh, if I could get teachers to participate the way I envision them to participate, it would be exactly what it's supposed to be. There's two things that you said in there that I think are really interesting. And I think Amy was ready to talk next. So I'm going to try to give you a segue, Amy. And one is that feeling of like joining the program and not being sure what I'm doing is coaching and then being reassured that yes, in fact, what I'm doing is coaching and like building that feeling of confidence. I've been having so many conversations lately with with coaches about this imposter syndrome, this feeling of, am I doing this right? Am I good enough? Is this what I really should be doing? Is this something I have skills in? And like just building up that confidence that maybe you don't have this specific vocabulary, you haven't practiced this specific skill, but we're going to put it all together and package it so that you're walking out of this feeling really confident. So that makes me feel really good to hear both those things. And then Carrie, when you were talking about having support from specific um, tech people with tech in their background, connects me so much to my last conversation with Amy, where she was talking a lot about seeing the other subject area coaches and how teachers interact with like the math coach or the literacy coach at her school and how it is unique. And I think there is a more solid understanding of the pedagogical focus of other subject area coaches than there is about what a, like a technology or an innovation coach can do. And I think that's really interesting. And because Abby is a literacy coach, I want to make sure that she gets a chance to talk about this too, because she maybe has a different perspective, but I'm not sure. Amy, did you have something I was trying to give you a segue? You do. Okay, good. Sure. No, I guess, I guess I was thinking of the two questions you asked and my first aha moment is kind of what you were just saying. And it's very, very basic and simple, right? But the aha moment that like, I'm a coach. Um, I think that a lot of people in, in the tech role either, as you've been saying, aren't considered coaches or don't operate in the same way as coaches. Um, but when I arrived at my school, for example, there was already an instructional coach and a literacy coach in my division, but I was never like quite introduced at the same time or like referred to in the same way or grouped together in the same way, just because of history and the, the way that I walked into the role. And I've seen much more as a specialist to get the makerspace up and running and teach classes. And so I think my aha moment in this program as simple as it sounds was just truly like recognizing and acknowledging that like I am a coach. <laughs> so that's really simple and probably most people don't need to get in a year long program to realize that. Um, but it's, it's kind of nice affirmation. And I think for me as a result, it led to this goal of like, how can I give that aha moment to my whole division and my whole school? Like how, how can I build this coaching culture? How can I act and interact in a similar way that the instructional coach and the literacy coach operate in the school so that people see us actually as a team and we build like a culture of coaching. And so I think the goal is really, we're in an exciting point where when I started, I felt really isolated. Um, but in one year we've 
physically expanded our team to now like seven coaches in my division, which is like blow your mind unheard of kind of awesomeness. Um, but we've also physically inherited a space. So one of the things that I tried to do last year was move my office physically to be with the instructional coach and literacy coach. And as a result of all the extra people that we were able to shift into coaching roles this year, they built us um, an office that I was able to help kind of um, envision and design with our team. have the collaboration room attached to an office space for the seven of us to work. And now we definitely feel like we have a presence in the school as a team. Um, and so being in this program has been extremely helpful as we're like trying to all get together on the same page, trying to come up with our philosophy, trying to establish ourselves as coaches within. Yeah, as you're talking, I, that makes connects. I don't know if all of you know this, but we also offer um, private cohorts for schools. So when there are schools with multiple coaches in a school and they want to build up a coaching culture, we'll run a private like custom timeline cohort of the coach for them. And I'm doing that right now with the school in Beijing. And that's been really interesting to see how all coaches at the same school are building that understanding of what coaching is, how coaching works in this context, what we can apply within this setting and how that makes sense for this particular school. And I think Amy, your school is going through that like on their own, not on their own, because obviously you have a great team, but I think that kind of recognition that it one per, it's hard for one person to change the culture of a school. It's great when you have a team to work together. And I'm going to segue to Abby because I know Abby also has a team and I've been threatening to segue to her for a while now. So I'll go to Abby and then I know Frank joined us. So after that, I'll let Frank hop in and introduce himself and ask Frank the same questions and maybe Chef has something he wants to say as well. Um, yeah, so I work on a team of five instructional coaches. Two of them are specifically for technology and three of us are for literacy. Um, but the nice part is that we are all instructional coaches first. So while we are, we have those specific focuses um, based on experience and things like that, we work with all teachers around all different things. So like this year, especially this year, as an instructional coach for literacy, I did a lot around technology, just getting people upskilled for the context that we're in. Um, it has been nice to shift away from being that, that help desk and technology focus. Um, but I, I've really enjoyed getting back into that, that literacy focus. Um, and then I guess to answer the questions that <laughs> I guess I didn't really answer the question. <laughs> um, so when I was first looking at becoming a coach, since it is my first year, um, I really wanted to just learn about the skills that are important for coaches and then like work on improving my skills. Um, and I had already done some private mentoring with Kim and I've also done coattail before. So, you know, I'm kind of a, a diehard fan of this, <laughs> of this company. <laughs> so that was kind of um, what prompted me to look into the coach. And um, I would say my biggest aha so far is the importance of reflecting. And just like, I think that's what I get most out of my conversations with Kim is, is having someone to, that I can like, verbally say those reflections and bounce ideas off of but really as a whole it's just like thinking about my own practice and thinking about what worked and what didn't work and then Kim just asked me really great questions to make me think even deeper um, so that's really been the best part for me thank you I've been having a lot of thoughts about that this week I don't know if any of you follow on Instagram but that's what I've been talking about all week on Instagram this power of this reflection and the time the time that we need to take to reflect. And I think as coaches, we often expect our teachers to do that. Like we want them to do that with us. But then as coaches, we don't, obviously you all do because you've invested your time in this program. But there are many coaches that wouldn't, wouldn't even think necessarily to have a coach or to have a coaching conversation about their coaching practice because they're so busy doing it all the time. But like this week, I, I had three different people say, exactly what Abby said. And I don't think you were one of them, Abby, even though I think we did meet on Monday, but like that power of reflection, that 
time that's just about you processing what's going on and having the right person ask the right questions to push you just that little bit further. It's so bad. And I, I believe it because I have a coach for myself too. I just think it's so valuable. Shep, I, I've threatened you now, so now it's your yeah. turn. And it's, it's a perfect segue, Kim, because um, the, the reason that uh, I got into this was because I was reflecting so much, uh, especially when we went online last year and everything got turned upside down. And it really made me question if I even wanted to be a coach anymore. And I, that, so I, I became a coach and I went through my first year as a coach and we all know how the first year goes, right? It was horrible and I didn't know if I was doing anything right and I felt like everything was wrong. And I said, okay, next year is gonna be so much better. And then next year happened and it was 2020. And it, we all, we were, uh, I, was, I was outside of the country for nine months and online for nine months. And during that time, um, yeah, I, I was just having a lot of doubt in the job. Um, because the position had changed so much being online. And um, yeah, during that time, none of my colleagues were interested in being coaching. It was just in survival mode uh, at that point. So I said, you know, before I make a decision, if I want to move back into the classroom, let me at least give coaching 100%. Let me find some PL that, um, you know, that will make me a better coach so that I can see if it's is it me? Is it the position? Or is it something else? And um, I, uh, I'd worked with Diana before. Um, we worked together at the same school um, years ago. So I already trusted her, reached out to her and asked her if the program would be a good fit. And um, uh, she said yes, obviously. So this is all her fault that I'm here. Um, but yeah, she's, she's been um, wonderful to work with. And, and um, yeah, so now that I'm I'm back, I've been back physically at my school for three weeks. I've actually been able to start putting into practice a lot of the things that um, we've been learning about, and it's been great. It's just been it's such like a game changer, and it's really made me reevaluate again what I think about coaching. And I guess my big aha moment has been in telling some of my colleagues about what I'm doing in, in this program and trying to explain to teachers what this program is like and. I, I realized that, yeah, it's it's a coaching course, but it's really just about communication and pedagogy when you when you break it all down. It's about speaking and listening and about what's best for the students. And at the end of the day, uh, it's everybody can benefit from those things. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. I really appreciate that because it is it's very challenging to try to explain how this is for coaches, but it can be for teachers. It can be for librarians. It can be for team leaders. It's anyone who has to work with other human beings in an educational context. I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to go beyond education, but that idea of listening and asking good questions and building trust and building relationships, those are foundational aspects of a coaching job, but they're also foundational aspects of any level of leadership and any time you have to work in a collaborative team. And it's been interesting because we've had quite a few classroom teachers actually come through the coach and the takeaways that they have for the way that they work either on their team with the other adults or in their classroom with the kids is amazing because all of this can apply in all those various settings. So I really appreciate you bringing that. Thank you, Chef. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If this was helpful for you in any way, please head over to our website for the Coach Micro Credential. As coaches, we know we can always coach better. And this academic year-long program is an amazing opportunity to help you level up your coaching skills with the support of your own mentor. I know that I'm telling you that as the premium mentor for the coach, so it doesn't mean that much, but I'm going to let you hear from one of our The Coach participants right now so you can see why they think you should join The Coach. I would highly recommend taking The Coach year-long micro-credential course to anyone who is interested in coaching, who is currently a coach or transitioning into that period or even if you are a classroom teacher like myself who would like to use coaching strategies with students and colleagues, the way the course is designed allows you to choose your level, making it easier to fit with your current role, 
I really appreciate the LMS system. It's intuitive, it's easy to use, and it's self-paced. So that way you can get the most out of it. The way that all of the course facilitators respond and are immediately there for you is another reason why I felt this course was so supportive. Are you ready to take your coaching skills to the next level? Join the next cohort of The Coach and make it happen.